and I believe anything is possible. I was fortunate. I lived in a small town, Jefferson City, that uh, my parents uh, were there, and my grandparents were there, and my great-grandmother was also in the same little town. We actually lived on the so this was on the what I would call the black side of town, uh, on the other sides of the railroad tracks, obviously. And but growing up, I didn't know any better. That was that was fine with me. And my parents uh, taught me a lot. My grandfather was a history teacher. He's, he was also the uh, principal of the black school at the time. Wow. Of course, and that's how where I started. I'm, I was in the first and second grade in the before integration. And so I went to the black school, and my grandfather was the principal there, and he taught me a lot about history. Uh, he, he, he really made a strong impression on me. You know, he said, people aren't born bigots. They, they're born just like everybody's born in bigotry, and a lot of things are things you learn. It's not something that you're born with, and it's something you can unlearn. And so sometimes you just have to expose people to the other thought around how humans are and, and how equal we are. And they oftentimes will move. And, and so he taught me a lot about having that conversation, not being afraid to have that conversation and it, it, about a lot of things so that people can understand that. My father was a tinkerer. He loved building stuff. He built a tractor from scratch. He built an amplifier. He, he built his own stereo system. I mean, he, he was a tinkerer. And that's how I got into to building things. Um, I, when, when I went to school in the black school, four grades were together. First through fourth grade was together. And I actually started before uh, I was six years old because of my grandfather. And I was good at math. I was really good at math, and one of the things the teacher allowed me to do is to do all the math I could do. So I was doing fourth grade math in the first grade. I was actually tutoring the fourth graders wow. uh, in, the, in the first grade. And I brought home an, uh, a book. It was a trigonometry book or a geometry book. And my mother called the teacher and said, well, this book is too advanced for my son. He's, you know, he's, he's just in the first grade. She said, no, nope, he's already doing this, this work in class. He's teaching you know, the students. Uh, you have to, to try. If you, say, oh, I, if you start out saying, oh, I can't do that, I don't understand, well, that might be true you don't understand, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. You've got to not be afraid and get in there and take something apart. Not be afraid that, oh, I might not be able to put this back together, but that's okay. You're going to learn something along the way. If you're not making mistakes, you're, you're just sitting still, right? And so that's my, my father, he, he always taught me that it's a learning experience, right? He didn't know how to build a tractor from scratch, <laughs> but that didn't stop him from trying, and he, he turned out to be successful. He made a lot of mistakes along the way. Okay, that's fine. You, you learn something from that, and I learned obviously being around him uh, that, yeah, anything's possible. And that, my grandfather taught me that as well, is anything is possible. And in fact, I have grew up thinking that achievement was expected. <laughs> I, I, all I know is that if I tell people I mentor as they're going through the career, their career, if they never take a job that scares them to death, they're not moving fast enough. And I always said that if I take a job and I'm scared to death that I don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to make it work, I've just made the right step. Because I'll figure it out. You have to have confidence that you'll figure it out, and you'll gain access to people to help you figure it out. But if I'm not afraid of that next position and what, whether I'm going to be successful or not, I haven't taken a big enough step. And, that, and so that's, I always go for those jobs that scare me to death. I have no clue, but those, those are the jobs you got to take. Well, I was, uh, ever since I was in the ninth grade, I wanted to work for IBM. For, I, just, I knew I wanted to do computers, and IBM was it at that time. This was back in the early 70s. And so I was fortunate. I kept my grades up when I was in college. Um, so I was, you know, I was a prospect. And uh, one of my professors had a recruiter and had a, one of his students was, had come from IBM to recruit. And he says, you really should talk to this Mark Dean fellow. He's pretty good. And so I got an interview. And um, yeah, 
they said, why don't you come down to Boca Raton, Florida and, and see if you like it. So I had interviewed with Hewlett Packard and actually Chrysler and some other people, but you know, when you go down to Florida and, and you get to work for a company that's the top in uh, computing, uh, I said, sure, of course, <laughs> you know, why not? And I saw the lab I'd get to work in and I didn't tell them this, but I, I would have been there. If, if they had just given me a place to live and fed me, I was good to go. I, they didn't have to pay me. I was, I was in heaven. I mean, this was heaven. All the equipment and all the parts and I could, I could build anything. Right? And so, so I said yes, and I ended up in Boca Raton, Florida. Um, I didn't know the trajectory, but I have to say I had a set of goals. And I had mapped out a 35-year career from that beginning. I had goals, and I, and I tell people it's important for you to set goals, so you know where you are and know where you want to be at any given time. And the reason I did that is so that opportunities only appear in a small moment in time. And if you know what you want and you know where you want to be, you can make a decision fairly quick. And it's amazing if you, most people, if they think back at the times where they've made decisions that changed their lives. They didn't know it was going to change their lives, but they were able to make decisions in that moment. It's, it's amazing because how many, how infrequently you get those moments in times where you make a decision within a small amount of time and it changes your life. So I felt I need to be prepared. So that's why I set up some goals. So I knew I wanted to get my master's degree within so many years of starting IBM. I knew I wanted to be an IBM fellow within so many years uh, from when I started. Actually, I wanted to be the youngest IBM fellow at the time. I knew if I'd made it, I was going to be the first black IBM fellow at the time. So that was in my plan. I knew I wanted to get my PhD because eventually, after I retired from IBM, I wanted to teach at a university. So that was important. I also wanted to be in IBM research, so I had to get my PhD, but I had to get my PhD within 10 years of when I started with IBM or I, was, I wouldn't have done it. So I had a time limit there. I knew I wanted to lead IBM research. I knew that when I wanted to actually retire from IBM, I knew when I wanted to start my academic career. And so, yeah, I had, uh, I had, a, lot of, I had a lot of plans, and, but I also had outs. So I'd had, I had escape plans as well, but I never let any of my goals be uh, kind of drop dead goals, meaning if I didn't achieve them, I lost. I, they were just milepost. And if you got there, good. If you were a little bit behind, but you were still in the right trajectory, cool, just you keep going. If something changed your life and you had to move past that trajectory, okay, then set up a new set of mileposts. But it, it, it helped me. Now, it's, you could argue it's a little extreme to kind of map out 30-something years of career. Uh, most people wouldn't do that. Um, but for me, it really, it helped me know where I was and helped me know where I wanted to be. Those first 10 years, that was just marvelous. Um, I, those have been, those were the best years from my career standpoint. So, like I said, I was in a lab, I had all this stuff around me, and I could build anything. So, for my master's degree, I built a graphics workstation. That base became one of the first IBM PCs, IBM PCAT, actually. So, that just experience, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from the people around me, and I have to say, you know, these achievements weren't made um, by myself, I mean, there's, there was a lot of people involved, a lot of key people that involved in helping, and, and I learned from, and being a part of the, of the work itself. A lot of my patents are in conjunction with other people. But um, I was, yeah, I, I thought, gosh, if I can build this, I didn't, when I was building something or designing something, I didn't necessarily say, oh, this is gonna change the world. I said, this, this has solved some problems that people have is interesting, and maybe it'll uh, come to something. If it doesn't, I learned a lot while I was doing it, I'll use that for the next one. And I think that, uh, that helped me in achievement. When, when the executives wanted a new system, 
uh, I was in the meeting and I said, oh, well, I happen to just have, I just have finished this design. It, it's close to what you want. I can make some tweaks. I think it'll do exactly what you need. They said, really? Okay. All right, you got it. And that's where the PCAT came from. That's where this ISA bus, which ended up being the industry standard for about 15 years, came from, was a project I had as a master's student, and it turned into something that uh, everybody ended up wanting. So.